Welcome to the inaugural edition of HT Next, a leadership platform to address key topics that are pertinent to today's generation, as it is today's generation that will be leading the change for the future. The theme for this year's summit is leading the change. I am Prerna Gaba Sibul, and in today's session, we have somebody very interesting with us. You all know her as mostly sane. She's a YouTuber, a blogger, a digital media influencer, an actor, and somebody with. Four million following on social media. Well, let's welcome Prajakta Kohli. Hi, Prajakta. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Prerna. Thank you so much. It's one hundred percent my pleasure. Uh, so, Prajakta, let's start the session without any further ado. Um, I want to ask you that uh, you know, in today's time, when uh, what does it take to actually become a digital media influencer or you know, content curator? considering that uh, you know it's becoming the new career option for many young adults you know i think the beauty of it is it that uh, it is that it doesn't take much you know all you need is an idea honestly and everything else just falls into place i mean uh, one thing that the digital platforms have done for creators like me is that they've opened up possibilities without many restrictions like i don't need to wait for a production house to produce my content i don't need to wait um i don't know for a big banner to you know uh, put me on platform for me to be able to perform i feel like the power to create your own um life as a creator uh, online is given to you by these platforms and i think which is why it's very basic the only thing you need honestly is an idea um you don't need expensive cameras you don't need a lot of equipment you don't need a massive team when you're starting off you can do it all by yourself as long as you have an idea okay and where i mean in terms of idea when you say idea there are so many things that are happening um, on social media specifically on instagram it has rapidly grown um, you know in the pandemic times so much is happening do you think is it it's, it's a saturated market how does one really stand and make a mark in that uh, you know whole pond you know uh, i used to think like that because I, uh, when i started creating content i thought it's one pond you know where everybody comes to drink water <laughs> but it's really not you know i used to think that it was a cap, like a, it was a pyramid ki okay aapke agar numbers zyada hai you're on top then like lesser numbers and then if you're just starting off you're on the bottom you have to make your way all all the way up to the top i think that has completely changed in the past 2 3 years i don't think it's a pyramid anymore i i i genuinely believe it's a whole globe where one person's top could be other person's bottom you know the fact that you have Uh, an audience for everything is very empowering as a creator you know there are so many um um creators there must be so many channels there must be so many handles that are massive in certain parts of the world that we have no clue about and i'm pretty sure they have no clue about the ones that we think are big in hmm. metros or other cities around uh, where we grew up so i uh, honestly uh don't think it's saturating at all if it is doing anything it is getting bigger and it's getting massier and it's getting more and more people to come to it to create as well as to consume um so i don't think it's getting saturated because there's an audience for everything there's an audience for every little bit of content uh idea you could think of and i think that is very empowering um also for content curators who are starting now and uh, they've just um, maybe made an account on instagram or just started uh, you know posting those reels and stuff what are the five uh, or six or 10 whatever tips uh, you think that they should follow when you know they're so, going through the whole process you keep saying content curator do you mean curator creator, or creator? Creator, curator. curator and influencer yeah okay i mean sorry got it um the tips you know honestly it's just a i think like i said content is king nothing else is ever going to work b uh, something that has really helped me stay in the game for myself has been consistency i mean there have been times when i've hit major content blocks and i was on the verge of giving up and uh, honestly just the fact that i kept putting out content after content every week is what held helped me stay afloat so consistency helps um number 3 i think our audience online is very very smart 
they make very conscious choices they know what they are doing they are uh, very very well aware of every click every like every dislike every comment that they make so i think as a creator never ever take them for granted never ever think that they won't know never ever think that are inko thoda na pata chalega i'll just like easily plug this product in it's it's not going to work like that they are there are 100000 times smarter than um you are online and uh, i think just not having a concrete plan helps because when i started creating 6 years ago um i didn't have a plan because i didn't know where this uh yeah. plan is going and i feel like that helped me in my career um so honestly it is changing every day you can never keep a tab on it you can never predict the future you can never be like this is the way to become successful when you're a creator you so yeah so i think just a few things also uh, patience goes a long way when you're in the content creation game uh, although sometimes it looks like oh i just need one video to go viral and then my career is going to arrive uh, but then never <laughs> you know for all you know you could have a hundred viral videos and the next one that doesn't work will put you right back to square one so uh, i think patience is something that has helped me uh, a lot building a team of people eventually um who understand and motivate you and who help you become better is very very important that is something that has given me a lot of motivation to keep doing what i do okay all right also when you uh, you know you talk about 6 uh, years it's a, it's a very big time and i'm sure that you've had your ups and downs um you've had your uh, challenges that you face uh, you know through that 6 years uh, would you want to talk about that how did you start how did you come up with the idea and how did it flow uh, for you the entire process um i started uh, in the feb of 2015 where i was failing as a radio jockey and i was desperately needing uh wanting to start something i was just really needing something new uh, i wanted something different something that i had fun doing um and that is when uh, sudeep who's from mandish entertainment sort of um, met me at the radio station and he was like do you want to make a youtube channel and what do i have on my... i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> okay we can't say anything <laughs> so you can <laughs> okay so um sorry so i was like yeah okay i can start a youtube channel it's not like i have any other plan for my career right now you know um i was young i was 21 22 uh when i started uh it was quite crazy and i made my first video uh, i remember uh the first video hitting 1000 views and i was just like what like why are 1000 people online like every time i saw a vid- like views on my video in my head i'm a very like i'm a very visual uh, like my thoughts are very visual uh, i don't know if that makes sense but uh, in my head i saw 1000 people in a room you know i was like how will that room look that's a massive room right and i was like oh okay um and i think the first few videos were also very liberating to me as um, a, a creator because suddenly i was unanswerable to anyone i didn't have to get my videos approved by anybody i could just upload what i wanted when i wanted and that kind of power can be very uh, addictive honestly for a creator uh, ki oh i get to choose i am in charge that authority can be very addictive and that is how it started it's been fun yeah i mean um, one of the best things i think till i started making youtube content i was that very you know uh, i was very very particular about what i'm going to do what my life is going to be like planning my future mapping it out having every step of the way rehearsed you know sketched out for me having a plan for the next 10 years i was that person all my life growing up and i feel like that was a major part of me that i that i shed when i started making youtube content because i i realized that i don't know what i'm getting into so i'm just going to take each day as it comes and i think that was the best decision ever i've had my um I've had my share of content blogs, setbacks, mistakes, lessons. Um, but the good thing about it is that I've always come out the other side feeling much stronger and wiser, and that has always helped me go forward. Uh, right now, I'm very grateful to be where I am. The fact that opportunities uh, and avenues are opening up so well for creators like me, where we are able to sort of go across platforms and be uh, more than just content creators the fact that i get to do a netflix show the fact that i get to do a film the fact that i get to speak at 
uh, beautiful uh, events across the world about things that I'm passionate about. The fact that I now have the power to try different kind of content. That's where I we're working on a few short films. We have one short film out already uh, and things like that. So I think it's a it's a beautiful time to be a creator and I'm very grateful to be uh, where I am. Yeah. And, you know, Prajakta, you were saying that there were 1000 views on that video on YouTube um, six years back. Uh, today, you have four million following on Instagram and that's massive. Uh, you know, most of uh, the actors also do not have uh, that kind of following. So um, how does it feel when you go and you, you know, you see and every day there's a rise? It's all, I think, somehow become a number game. Does the number uh, any time affect you that you feel, oh, um, I've got less views on this uh, post today or uh, I've got lesser uh, people following me today or more of them? How does the number game play for you? You know, honestly, it and I'm not I'm not trying to be cool here. I'm being very honest with you. It really doesn't affect me at this point in life really? because like, it doesn't. It doesn't because it used to. Uh, till about three years ago, I think I was obsessed. I was like, oh my God, like, why did this one have like 50,000 less of views than the mm -hmm. first one? Or, oh, I'm so happy that I got 4,000 more followers today than yesterday. But eventually, I think, um, uh, and you know, I, I, don't, I don't mean to sound preachy. But in my head, and this is only and only for my uh, mental piece, in my head, I've just reached a point where, like I said before, there is no big or small, you know. Four million for us here might be massive, but I'm pretty sure that in about 60-70% of our country, people have no clue who I am. <laughs> You know, um, I mean, great. Okay, people in Mumbai, Delhi, Pune, Bangalore, Kolkata, you know, places like that know me. But there must, them, there are so many pe pieces of, you know, uh, uh, parts of our country that have no clue who I am. And that suddenly puts a lot of things in perspective. Ki, uh, you know, but if I was, uh, if I, you know, but if I was from the smaller places, like yeah. say a small village or a smaller town and I could have 5,000 followers but they would all know me there you know what I'm saying so it just yeah. it's it's a, very, it's a very dynamic game honestly for me right now it's about the it's about the kind of content that I have uh the pleasure of being a part of that is more um uh, uh reassuring than the numbers. I mean, I'm very grateful for the numbers. Please don't get me wrong. I'm very grateful. I mean, um, I can see what has happened over the years. And sometimes I look at my own numbers and I'm like, how, this, like, how are these people following me? <laughs> uh, it's a lot of fun. But I, I don't create content under the pressure of numbers. I like to create content under the pressure of creating content for my audience who comes to watch me. Um, I have a beautiful relationship with them where they are very honest about uh, what they're feeling, how they're feeling, what they like, what they don't like. And I, I feel like I'm more grateful for the engagement than I am for the, for the number, number of Well, that's that's something I think uh, which is very rare uh, that I have heard because mostly what people are is the number. And it really drives um, uh, people crazy because especially the people who've just started, uh, who've just become digital influencers, uh, they're the ones uh, for whom the number matters the most. How, uh, what are a few tips that you would like to give them to, you know, keep it sane? I think, uh, I think when it comes to being worried, it's only natural because you, uh, hmm. uh, you see people around you that, oh, okay, you know, this once you hit these many followers is when you get that and, you know, stuff like that. And uh, I feel like if you're just starting off, don't don't start off with no drive for numbers i have uh, and I, I, I and it's a little contradicting from what i said but i did start off and uh, wanting to reach certain milestones for myself was a major uh, my, uh, major motivating factor for me when i started off honestly i remember when i wanted to hit my first 30000 mark it was a different high where i was like oh i want to touch 30000 subscribers and when i did i was like oh i want 50 now and i feel like as long as you set those limits for yourself and not anybody else, I think you're good. You know what I'm saying? Um, you decide what numbers you want to go for and then you chase that. Don't let uh, 
other people around you tell you what numbers you should be chasing i feel like taking that power in your hands sort of uncomplicates a lot of things in your mind as a creator and the mind is your biggest asset when you're a creator it's where all the magic comes from so you comes need to make from, sure yeah. that is okay um i am not driven by numbers but i still have goals i still have um uh, things i have laid down for myself for this year that you know i want to do this and i want to hit this and i want to achieve that and i want to accomplish this and that is what motivates me to keep doing what i do every day so i will never say that eh, numbers don't matter that's not important i mean obviously you also need you also you i feel like you have you need to have an interior view towards it you know for you what are the numbers going to do to you they're going to give you more impact they're going to give you more reach they're going to give you more eyeballs they're going to give you make your platform bigger so have that uh, uh outlook towards numbers and not ki oh shit uske utne ho gaye to mujhe bhi utne karane padenge ya fir agar mere itne hue nahi to fir meko you know koi seriously nahi lega so i feel like as long as the drive for numbers is internal i think it's healthy let it not okay. be external okay lovely that's i think a great thought it should be internal um also prajakta planning the content is a very very major part of um, being a content creator we of course see those amazing reels and you know those fun content coming out but uh, at the back end there are a lot of things that uh, usually are not as glamorous as we see them on screen um how would uh, you uh, you know tell us any anecdotes about that anything that you would like to share of how the back end work is and um, how do you do how do you manage that it's very different for different platforms honestly uh, reels are just i love creating reels it's so much fun it's on the go it's quick it's uh but the back end of it is that i'll have like 18 different drafts for the same reel <laughs> <laughs> which one so it's always very uh, because it's 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 very exciting you know you have uh, you have a way of doing things and then you constantly feel like as a creator you can keep doing better like i watch videos from a couple of weeks ago and i was like ah i find it right now it would be better i would do it like that yeah. on youtube again it's very different youtube i have a very very efficient team that works with me to help me stay um in the game to help me stay on track um to give you an example of that i'm going to be going away for the next 2 3 months because i'm shooting a couple of really exciting projects so i'm not going to be able to do anything for my youtube like i won't i won't have time to shoot create content uh for my youtube mm-hmm. it's why my team and i we blocked a whole week all of last week was blocked where well, we did something we never imagined we could do but we actually like wrote uh planned and shot 22 videos in 5 days uh so i'm like sorted for the next few months and i was just like how on earth mm-hmm. did we pull that off and it's like heavy duty videos you know like characters and setups and things like that my team just came through um we booked a whole studio we made different setups we put it all we, we you know it was just it was a whole thing uh five days of just constant videos and i was just so happy about that that now uh even though i'm going to be away my content is not going to stop so i feel like there's a lot that goes behind but it it is always worth it and also uh, i think the time 6 years back when you started making content for youtube uh to now how has the transition been because that time i i guess there was just youtube now there are a lot of other platforms and those platforms need different kind of um, videos and different kind of layouts and different kind of things work different uh, you know differently for all the platforms um how do you manage that and how has the transition been for you you know pretty no honestly there hasn't been much of a transition for me yet because uh, when i started off it was youtube and instagram uh instagram wasn't lo- i'm so sorry my phone just keeps ringing um instagram wasn't uh, looked at uh, as a major social media platform hmm. it was more of just, you know it was just just sharing things and it wasn't really it wasn't really a place people went to looking for entertainment that was what youtube was for where people would come with the intent of spending a few minutes or a couple of hours um so when i started off it was just youtube i think about 
two, three ish years ago is when Instagram started suddenly mm-hmm. becoming a place where everyone was um, very excited about oh, creating and consuming content. So right now I feel like uh, we're going steady with YouTube and Instagram. So not a lot of transition has happened. Um, other platforms, I mean, I'm still... Uh, you know, I feel like <laughs> there is so much already on YouTube. You know, you have YouTube, then you have the community on YouTube, then you have the shorts on YouTube, then have then you have Instagram, then you have Reels here, then you have IGTV, you have one minute posts on the timeline, you have stories, you have highlights. It's just a lot already. So I feel like the transition wasn't really from platform to platform. I'm so sorry. Uh, the transition wasn't really from from platform to platform, but it was more from uh, um, the kind of content because a three minute video would be very different from a fifteen second reel that yeah. goes on Instagram. And sort of getting that right was uh, what was more transition. Okay. Do you also feel that uh, the content, the kind of content we consume today, uh, of course, like you said, that the market is not saturated, it's just growing. But do you also think the content is changing now? Because uh, there was a time when we used to sit on YouTube and watch a video for an hour or, you know, 40 minutes, 30 minutes. That was the timeline of YouTube. And now we just want those quick 15 seconds, 30 seconds videos on Instagram. And, you know, we just get our uh, dose of entertainment. Uh, do you think uh, that the way we consume content is also changing? We have more options now. It depends. It's very customi- customizable. It's like it's like you know that you will only open YouTube after a long day when you have, say, 30 minutes before bed or if you're in the train or you're stuck in traffic and you have time to kill. You will only go to a YouTube for that. <clears throat> Instagram, I honestly think, is like opening the fridge. You know, you could be between two very important meetings and you wouldn't necessarily want to consume content, but you would still open Instagram and surf yeah. through it. Yeah. Chalo, second to second ka video bhi available hota hai. So I think it's very, it's, it's, it's all up to the user, honestly. It is all up to that. And the, the fact that both kinds of contents are getting consumed tells us that it's so customizable. It is up to them. If they think that their audience thinks that they surf for two classes, they open it for a little bit, then they open Instagram. If they don't have any work for the next two hours, then they'll go to YouTube. I think it's up to them. I don't think as creators, we get to ever make this call that what will get consumed more. Uh, isn't that one question that you ask yourself when you're ideating or you're writing down uh, your creative instincts that uh, what kind of content will be consumed more? Is that one of the considerations? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, when we are creating content, it's not, I've, I've, <laughs> my, my team hates me for this, but I enjoy creating short form content so much that there are sometimes really good ideas that we've sort of sat down. My writers and I, we've sat down and we've uh, written for like YouTube and I'm like, but it's a real one. And they're like, I'm going to make a script and I'm going to make a real one. Like, it's like that, you know. I feel like just um, both are very addictive, you know, like longer sketches are very addictive, 15 second reels, 30 second reels. Both are a very exciting process. So when we are writing it, yeah, definitely we are... Uh, we definitely have that filter that is, is relevant anymore. Is this going to work? Are people going to get it? Also, sometimes I feel a little bit of a bridge in understanding between me and my audience because when I started creating content, I was 21, 22, I'm 28 mm-hmm. now. Um, so writing for my audience who is, you know, 13 or 16 sometimes is very, like, there's a gap that I feel uh, because I'm just like, I'm like, w- uh, me as a 14-year-old is very was very different from the 14-year-olds we have right now. So sometimes that's a yeah. gap and I find that perspective is filled in by my writer's team. So it's always a, there's a lot of times when I'm on a writer's call and I'm like, oh, you know what? We can do this. And they were just like, what's that? And I'm like, what? Guys, <laughs> cool. And they're like, Guys, and nobody does it anymore. <laughs> so that is one of the things that I sometimes struggle with. But uh, I'm very blessed to have a team that sort of helps me fill in those gaps. Great, great. No, lovely. You also spoke about uh, those uh, writer's blog or uh, uh, you know, influencers blog, if I may call it. How do you deal with uh, how do you deal with those uh, things when they come your way? I didn't deal with it very well the first time it came my way. It was it was in mid two thousand seven October of two thousand seventeen. I think August or October. 
where I thought that, oh, this is the end of it. And now I got to shut my channel and move on and maybe look for another job or like try to study a little bit more because maybe say clearly it's not happening. Um, but I got over that. And then it did well for me because suddenly I got fresher perspective towards creating content. Uh, I got a very tight reality check as to where I was standing as a creator and why my videos are not working. And then it kept happening. It kept happening. It kept happening. Um, so now I feel like we may not be friends, my content block and I, but we are like colleagues, yeah. <laughs> acquaintances, living in the same space, not getting in each other's lane, but knowing that it's going to happen. Honestly, I don't freak out with it so much anymore because I know that it's going to pass and it's very normal. It happens to everybody. Yeah. You don't have to necessarily be a content creator to go through that, you know, any field, any uh, work area sort of puts you through a point where you're suddenly very blind as to where you're going. And I feel like that's okay. So I made my peace with it. <laughs> I don't like it still, but I don't, you know, I don't freak out as much anymore. Yeah. And um, how, if you know, of course, again, the same question that uh, how should one deal with those uh, creative blocks? Because mm. it's something that we can't avoid. It just, it yeah. just comes our way. So, uh, so what do we do I to basically? I think one of the things, the only thing that worked for me was that I didn't, like I said before, I didn't stop creating content because if I'd stopped after facing my block, I would never get back. I know for a fact I would never get back. So I feel like the fact that I didn't stop and I, I just kept telling myself that, you know, let's just get all the bad content out. <laughs> so the good one starts coming later. You know, don't let it stay choked up in your head. Let it be out. Let it be on paper. Let it be a bad, embarrassing video on YouTube. As long as it helps you get over it. And then you reach a point where you can get a hang of what's working for you, what's not working for you one more time. Um, so, yeah, I think what worked for me was to not stop and know that everybody goes through it and there's a sense of relief when you think that oh everyone you know is sort of at some point in their life faced it i kept telling myself and i'm sure ellen went through content blogs i'm sure michelle obama was going through <laughs> content blogs. uh so i was like it's okay good that's great uh, so Prajakta, before we um, end the session i would really want to ask you something uh, two questions actually uh, a when you started off how was the reaction of people around you, your peers? Because mm. at that point of time, uh, now it's become very trendy and it's become a fun thing to do. But at that point of time, around six to eight years back, it was something that people didn't even know about. And you know, people were like, yeah. Kya hai and why are you doing it? I, uh, so many influencers tell, tell me that, you know, the reaction was not as good as it is today. How was it for you and how did you cross that path of, you know, people um, not being able to understand the whole product, the aspect of being a digital influencer? You know, I mean, I, I always say this, I'm, I've completely locked out in the people department. I have had the same circle forever since that I can remember. My parents are my closest friends. I have a group of, I have a total of like five friends <laughs> that have been with me ever since I was a child uh, and it stays that's what I'm very very fortunate to have these people that's what, yeah. <clears throat> yes so um, when I started off what they thought was the only thing that mattered to me I honestly did not think ki, you know what are my relatives or what are my other friends or like colleagues or like people around me or you know generally people on the internet what are they going to think about what I'm trying to do when I spoke to my parents my only thing was that I just hope that they support me in this because if they won't I wouldn't have done it um and I remember going and talking to my parents about it and they were like yeah do it it'll be fun let us know if we could help and even today even today I've been doing this for over six years and even today my parents are my biggest support when it comes to creating content uh, all through lockdown I had hit a major content block during lockdown too where my father once entered my room and he literally like I was right here on the floor crying <laughs> with my <laughs> camera and I was like I can't shoot this I don't want to do this and my father's entered and he's like okay so he went back he got me a like a tall mug of cold coffee and he's like come show me your script and he helped me shoot the video my mom is just the best when it comes to helping me manage everything. She helps me stay on track with so many things. Uh, moving ahead, my team. Again, I have I'm I work with people who have now become my closest friends. I and by closest I mean because I spend almost all my waking hours with them. They just know my deepest, darkest secrets, and it's just that. And I feel like that 
that sense of comfort that comes from going from one home to another home was very important for me because i'm a complete people person like i'm not i'm not an extrovert as in like i don't i don't have a lot of friends but the friends that i have i am i am madly in love with and i need them to uh, know and i need their opinion on everything that i'm doing so i remember when i started and i told everybody one of my closest friends then she was like oh let me come home and help you shoot your first video and i was like okay and then she worked <laughs> with me and uh it was just so amazing even today uh i feel like and the reason why i know that they are amazing is because nothing has changed between us in the past you know years because life for me personally as a person i'm very grateful uh has changed massively this is not how my life was 6 7 years ago and it has made so many massive turns and it's just been so amazing and i'm so grateful but i know that the the my my core uh, group of people has remained exactly the same lovely lovely that's i think the best thing that uh, one mm. can ask for so yeah. uh, that's that's great also prajakta the um, uh, i don't know how to put it but uh, the kind of um, uh, you know the kind of relationship with you uh, that you have right now with your uh, uh, other uh, digital influencers so there are of course a whole lot of it we've seen you do uh, your reels mm. and stuff with a lot of yeah. other um, you know influencers and they've come out to be really really nice and very appreciated how is that uh, relationship between all the different influencers i mean there's a lot of i mean we always we always talk about this um there is so much mutual respect i feel like in the community um that i am friends with i will only speak for like people that i am friends with i mean i am i was a massive massive fan of all these people that i get to you know now be friends with and hang out to with and shoot to with you know i have loved ashish and bhuvan and i had the uh, pleasure of meeting harsh a couple of times nick and i are so tight i love ranveer so much sejal sherry and i you know as there are so many people uh, honestly that um uh, i used to watch and admire and the fact that i get to be you know friends with them is just amazing uh there's a lot of mutual respect because we get where all of us came from uh we get the days that we spent just trying to make it through um uh everyone's also very supportive i mean uh, i was supposed to shoot something uh uh with ashish last week and he was supposed to shoot with me before that and both of us were just busy with what we were doing and it was so heartbreaking i was like oh my god we've not shot in so long also these are people i can genuinely sit down and have a conversation with and i feel like that matters a lot youtube uh, abhi to chalo khair pandemic hai so that hasn't happened in a couple of years but youtube has these you know fun trips that they take all of us creators on they're like come wow. Oh, have fun! Eat. It's going to be fun, um, which are again a lot of fun because I get to hang with all these amazing people. So yeah, um, it's. I just feel like there's a sense of uh, uh, mutual respect. There's a sense of uh, a community for sure um, uh, amongst us, and I'm very proud to be a part of it. <clears throat> Oh, lovely! So there are no fights for projects and fights for everything <laughs> that we usually get to know about people. But I think in in the influencer market or the social media market, we've hardly had. Uh, any I haven't. Such. No, yeah, no, I haven't ever reached a point where I'm like, hmm, why did that happen to him or her? That hasn't reached <laughs> me yet. Yeah, I think the pond is a lake where there is uh, space for everybody, which is, I think, the only good part about yeah. being there as yeah. a digital influencer. Yeah, because so, it's not like you're watching television. Kya hai? Agar saath baje uski serial aari hai, to baaki yeah. saare serial mujhe repeat pe dekhne padenge. Ya main nahi dekh paungi. You know, ab jitne chahe, jitne baar dekhlo ek hi serial baar, you know, baar baar baar, and nobody loses out. I feel like that is the best thing about uh, the internet. Lovely. Thank you so much, Prajakta. We'll end the session, but before we do that, we want you to give five tips uh, to the people who have just entered into the digital game and they are trying to make space for themselves. Uh, if you can give them five tips that they can, of course, follow, or even if they can, you know. I think exactly. It'll just be the same as I said before. Yeah, like content is king. Stay consistent. Do not take your audience for granted. um don't have any filters like on your mind and yourself because your audience can always tell so basically be yourself which is a very cliche thing to say i'm just i'm trying to say you know find a cooler way to say it but trust me it just helps a lot and i think just have patience because it's a long game but it's a fruitful one 
Lovely. Uh, thank you so much, Prajakta, for taking thank up the time you. and joining us today. It was a very insightful uh, session that we had. And, thank you. Um, hoping to see you at a lot of other platforms and for uh, sure. All the best for future. Perfect. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.